looking at one problem, what is the case? So, what he is saying, I am drawing here. So, this is function generator. Output of function generator as may be here. So, you are talking about this. Okay, so, load impedance of that also is there. 50 ohm or whatever. Okay, so let's say 50 ohm. It's terminated with 50 ohm. So, what? So, there are three so this is V in sine omega t. How to make 180 degree flip? This is an alpha. I am following question now. So, how to make it 180 degree flip? So, this is a function generator. Let's assume that it's very high end function generator which has two channels. So you are saying that this, this guy will have plus v in sin omega t and this will be minus v in sin omega t. This is what you are saying? No, there is no function generator available which can give you plus and minus. So look, when there are two channels, when there are two channels, you are going to have, you know, there are actually, there are two function generators, you could say. This function generator will have two things, amplitude and frequency. This will have amplitude and frequency. How do you make sure that amplitude is possible? Frequency is also possible. Let's look at this. Let's assume that I made this kind of signal available at channel 1. No problem. But channel 2 might be, let's say you are making minus V in and same frequency. But who will take care of this starting point? Do you understand? When it's differential, they will have same phase, right? If not same phase, means minus sin V in sin omega t, then you have to make sure that it's only 180 degree phase shift. Only and only 180 degree phase shift. If there is fluctuation in 180 degree phase shift, your input itself is leaky, you will have even harmony. I following? So, you cannot remove even harmonics. If you appreciate this question now, right? So, such kind of things are not available, but if you are using key site, what they have done? You have to pay some money to them. Then they can sync both of them from the back. From the back, you have to connect both the wires and you have to sync them. Both the uh, both the function generator output has to be synced. This is one possible thing, but this is expensive business. Maybe you have to pay like one lakh just to get this one. So I want some cheaper solution. Now we can talk about that cheaper solution. What you are saying? You are saying you want to have transformer, okay? Transformer, okay? So, so what? You have transformer. Now, what is your idea? If I have 4 volts sin omega t, I want 2 sin omega t <coughs> and 2 sin omega t 180, but I want plus 1 volt also. Now, do this. Using transformer, how you are going to do this? Okay, very good. N1 and N2, same, okay, N1 and N2 are same, okay, as you are saying, so let's call them N, right, okay, so, and we can provide a ground made of the transformer, okay, I provided, so you want center depth, okay, I did it, so this side, from here to here, it's 2 sin omega t, and here, it's minus 2 sin omega t, although the peak inverse voltage is 4 sin omega but still it's not solving one volt. So we can add. Where? Where? <laughs> add means do you want me to add some <laughs> adder? <laughs> adder of? Battery. Battery where? Okay, mm -hmm. this battery. Battery of one volt. Okay, so 
where should I add this? In series of. In series of. In series of, <coughs> in series of both. This. <laughs> it's a short circuit then. If you are connecting some independent source, the highest value will go right, and it will try to. You know, both are at the capacitive tank, so after some time, like they will reach to some steady state value. Okay, but yeah, your try was was good. Right. This this is the uh, standard solution known to most of the analog circuit designer. They are doing this when they are making their own circuit with such setup. To get 180 degree phase shift, even if that function generator is not giving 180 degree, this will always give 180 degree, and that's the property of transformer. So you have to design transformer such a way that generally, like when I used to check my circuits, I used to make my own transformer. I used to get my own core, and then like turns you have to count. Generally, I take something like one side 10,000 turns, 10,000. So I used to count it. There is no other way. <laughs> so, this is the way. So, that was the question asked. So, how is the question? Question was good or bad? This was the question. The solution is already you know, available to you. Right? Then, this was the question. So, where you have to write down the admittance impedance matrices using cut set you have to find out q matrix d matrix i'm showing them circuits paper which i asked for the phd students comprehensive exam and there was some reactance curves were given and through that you have to synthesize lc and for that system they have to draw the board and they have to Comment on phase margin and gain crossover. What do you think? How was the question? Doable? Huh? Standard. Standard means standard of mine or standard network theory question. Okay. Okay. Can you determine schematic diagram of second order low pass, high pass, bad pass, and not filters? In addition to what you are doing, can you add this one also? Just to know whether you know or not. These are some of the interview questions people are asking. Let's see what you are doing. But you you can use only passive components R, L, and C, and the marks will be given to them. Those who are going to use the minimum number of R, L, C, right? If you are using, like I can design it with second order with four components, eight components. <coughs> If you can design it everything with just two to three components. So what what will be the schematic diagram for low pass filter? Nazrul, what do you think? Second order low pass filter. But that will give me first order. What you are saying, this R and C will give me first order. If you are saying, if we do this, then it's not optimized. I can draw with this one also. This is the optimized answer. There are two elements, both are frequency dependent, so it's a second order. If I replace this with this one, it's again this. And it's easy to control. Look, if you have, you know, it looks like C1 and C2 and R1 and R2. It's not cut off frequency, uh, is not at these are not the cut off frequency. If you solve it, you will realize you need to add if you are doing this. If you are adding one buffer extra here, then you will have this these frequencies, and it's like very difficult to have R1 and R2 matched capacitors, capacitors, 
C1 and C2 max. So it will be very difficult to have frequency on same place. You call it? What I mean to say? So better answer may be this one because this is 1 by 2 pi root LC. That's the time frequency rate. Yeah, it will not work. You are saying that you can try and you can solve this. If you you will try to solve what you are going to see. <laughs> so you have to apply first of all three different currents and right. Look the driving point function looking from here is R plus C. But if you are looking from here, it's not R plus C plus this whole network C1 in shunt with R2 plus so yesterday she solved right? You solved it. No, Rupal was there. Okay, I asked this thing to Rupal. So she found out it's a big like a trans big big function which is not coming on same place <coughs> so i'm asking this because now you should know what how the filter works right. okay so we talked about various digital to analog converters might be binary weighted and we also talked about thermometric weighted but what do you think uh, why do we need thermometric weight not bina binary weight what do you mean by noise <laughs> glitches. Yeah. Glitches are happening when the major problem happens when MSB is 0, uh, MSB is 1, the rest of the things are 0 and the next bit if I am adding 1, this is 0 and the rest of the things become 1. Right. So in this case all the switches are getting switched and they are coming into parallel. So you will observe maybe plus to minus, minus to plus all these glitches and these glitches are have to be tolerable range has to be less than 0.5 less than. but when you are doing such thing it might be possible that you will not get less than 0.5 lsb but it will be higher than 0.5 lsb so the better idea is you need to change this um, <coughs> uh, scheme to thermometric weighted you can think about some other things also like Fibonacci. You can think about gray code. And some places it's called segmented tag. Where you make sure that that switching is not happening. Right. So in all the cases, if you are designing DAC, which is single ended of course you are going to see all harmonics or you can say that you will have harmonic distortion 2 harmonic distortion 3 and all the harmonic distortions will be there but if it is differential will not have even harmonics. This is the expected things, but let's assume that I'm I'm making a circuit which has only two bits. I1 and I2 are binary weighted. If I draw the layout. 
same has to be at another side. Right? But this is when we are saying differential signal, you have to give also differential switching. Do we understand what is what do you mean by differential switching? Hmm? What do you mean by inverted? Like you are saying one zero zero zero, so other side it has to be zero triple one. Is it like that? Okay. So he is right. Right? So you have to do such a way that it's differential. So these switching are differential, but when you are drawing the layout uh, very quickly I'll tell you if you are looking from the top of NMOS it look like this one if you are looking into PMOS PMOS will be inside some well which is N well so Siddhant are you following Siddhant and Raman if you are looking from top of NMOS It looks like this one. All the white part is equal to P substrate. Here on starboard, whatever you are seeing white, it's P substrate and these are so strain and gate made up of something. Right? It might be like you say N plus diffusion layers, this poly layer, right? But if you are looking at <coughs> PMOS for which you need to make such arrangement so if I am looking from top white part is P I can draw such system where this is P plus P plus and this is polygate right but around this there is something extra thing is also visible which is like green color dotted line which is known as N well so N well has to be inside some P substrate. So just to make sure that uh, it's same thing for easy thing I am drawing such thing. So now can you understand this is NMOS and this is PMOS and you understand this is drain source and one vertical line is gate. Right. So if I want to draw the layout of such system where there are Transistors are like this, transistors are like this, and maybe here I1, I2, I1, I2. Sorry. I1. I'm not drawing the current mirror layout, so. And these two drain are connected with each other. <coughs> and this gate is connected to some switching value like B0 and maybe So now I am asking you one question. This is layout by the way. I1 and I2 will have some layout. Now you understand these are the transistors. Plus sign is transistor. So can you tell me, will this uh, layout have harmonics which will include even harmonics? Will be there or not? This is differential by the way. This B0, okay, I should have written B0 bar, B1 bar. Okay, now it's differential, right? So, what do you think, Subham? Odd harmonics will not be there. Odd will not be there. Okay. So, Subham says odd will not be there. Okay. But why? Why is it so? 
Okay, so you are saying even will be removed. Okay. Somebody else who wants to add, Saurabh? Hmm? Even will not. You think about it. Just look at this. This is the layout. So what? What is the requirement of any any circuit to get even harmonics as zero? What is the requirement? Differential input. Okay, so there is a differential input. No problem. What else? Hmm? Output is also different. Okay. 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 What else? If it is differential, then common mode will go. But all these things will happen when. So, do you know any other condition than this one? Are you following Siddhant and Raman? Is it new for you or it's already known to you? Okay, you have. So, differential signal will work. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. If there is a system which is like this, this is called normal single ending where V in and V out. Here the problem is like harmonic circle. I want to remove it, so what I am doing, I am adding the <coughs> differential structure. I call this one as V in plus, this one as V in minus. So this will be V in sine omega t and this will be minus V in sine omega t. But if you need some common mode voltage also, so both will be same. Which will make sure that these transistors are in saturation. So okay, that's fine. But there is a common mode uh, input voltage which is influencing this these two transistors. So to remove that influence, we are adding one current through which like VCM minimum value is needed afterwards the current flowing through this one and this one will be like depending on this current but the whole theory works with one assumption that this R and this R are same this M1 and this M1 are exactly same if they are not same then you, will, you are going to see something else right I am saying M1 and M, M1 instead of this, this is GM but this is giving me GM plus or minus delta GM, R but plus or minus delta R, R but plus or minus delta R, let us keep one, one guy as constant so, then it will not be differential, even though your input is differential, output is differential, so the most important part is to balance network both the balance network 1, balance network 2 has to be same, balance network 1 and balance network 2 has to be equal, are these equal? Yeah, so this is more the first, huh? I1 and I2, they are same. I will give you a hint, thereafter only one answer will be left. Look, these two transistors are matched. These two transistors are matched. Everything is matched. These currents are matched. So what is left? What is not matching? Wires. Wires are not same. So remember to draw the differential deck or differential ADCs layout such a way that all the wires will have same angle, same length, same everything same. If they are not same, you will see even harmonics. Right? This is common practice, people are making mistake because what is happening when <coughs> let's assume that you are the one who is creator of DAC. So DAC positive side, let's call one is DAC positive and DAC negative. Actually I copied, I, I use this DAC positive and negative exactly same. It's differential, right? 
So VDD I connected no problem. Ground I connected no problem. Input I connected no problem. If this is the case, Yeah, two different single ended DAC. So it will be always differential, right? And it will give like all the wires and everything same. I'm using this by called Q, right? Q is no, instantiate, right? By pressing I, I'll make one layout of DAC plus somewhere. And then I'll call it again. I can do that, right? Again, I'll call it. So I'll call it twice and I keep it here. So it's exactly same. Layout is same. Now I'm giving inputs. Inputs are going from here. So look at this. B0, B1, B2 till Bn. And output plus and output minus if they are going this way, it's not a problem if this is the case. But the case is your manager will tell you that Look, you have to design a DAC or abstract view is already given to you and V out plus and V out minus are here. This will be the general case. You will not have liberty. Here also you can see it's not differential input. So the most important part of all the digital circuitry is how you route them. So just I'm giving you one insight. You have to follow something called analogs, analog layout techniques where if there are two signals here, if such kind of things, they will talk to each other. Right? So do you know any technique? Hmm? Transpose means to cross each other after some distance. Then definitely they will talk to each other. Maybe you said we can put ground and Yeah, so as he is saying, let's keep some ground dummy wire which might be connected to like ground almost like four side everywhere ground is available let's say it's not one ground and entire in IO you will have a big ring of actually it will be like this in IO you can make the orthogonal there is no problem chip will actually look like this one so ground is available so you can connect this to ground so you have to use all the crude techniques which you have studied. It's up to you. There is no written rule how to design it. So I generally when I draw the layout, I do this one. Just to make sure that there is no crosstalk or significantly you will have equal uh, uh, wire length. The base layout is the one where if you want to make a differential, even though this is differential like this part is plus this part is minus even though this is plus and minus are exactly equal although it doesn't look equal here but you have to assume that both are equal then you will not have even harmonics this just from block but in reality when you are drawing the, the wires if they are not equal length equal angles they will have different values and you will have even harmonics so sometimes what you need to do like you can make some system which is like this also when i'm saying plus plus minus minus it looks like this one have you written pizza square pizza and pizza square <laughs> or i made one layout like this once i made layout So I just made intelligently one ADC whose layout is like this and afterwards I made 
six layouts like this. It was not exactly circular, it was like this. So, as many number of, uh, you know, repetition in your layout, you will have better harmonics uh, removal. Otherwise, you will definitely see harmonics. That value will be lower, but you will see harmonics. So you have to make sure that your layout is made intelligent. Right. So <coughs> it's all about balance network. Elements. And in reality, when you are going to draw the wires, they are also part of balance network. Okay. That's why you have to use parasitic extraction. Again, simulation, again, simulation. Yes, and that is what you need to show that yeah, there is no uh, harmonics. And it's not possible. Don't worry. <laughs> because look, when you are doing the packs, you are going to run one thousand two hundred corners. You will choose the worst case corner and on top of it run some 10,000 Monte Carlo. Right? And look at what is happening at 6 sigma. You will see some things <laughs> for sure. This is what all industry people are doing. They are going to the rigorous simulations and they check what is happening. So just uh, like schematic simulation won't help. You have to change something in the schematic. Sometimes you have to go back and you have to perform packs. Maybe in packs you are not getting the answer. Again, simulate it in schematic. No, the problem will be in layout. Of course. So you have to change the layout also. But if you are following the techniques which says that it has to be differential, means it's good. It will be different. Yeah, even it's possible to get the event. You have to fix those things, right? Because it's all about the RNC model. If you are drawing one line, see, I have drawn one line from one point to another point. But right now, it's drawn. I'll ask you one one question. One of my friend who is a right now professor in IIT Bombay, he asked me once. Okay, he is an expert of control. So he asked me. So, whether it's linear or non-linear function? Linear. Who told you this linear? Why? Uh, sorry? You are saying linear. Yeah, linear as so, well as non-linear. Okay, so how do you get this one as linear or non-linear? Just consider a small part of the system. No, it's a piecewise thing. Okay. Yeah. We are not uh, talking about piecewise. That's an approximation which is for non-linear. So, if there is a system which is non-linear, you are approximating with piecewise. But in total, it's non-linear, right? Okay. So, is it non-linear or linear? So, I also told it's non-linear. So he told, if it is with respect to zero, everything has been checked with respect to zero. But who gave you this axis of you know comparing? This might be your axis of comparison is this one. That it might be linear, right? So, when I am drawing this, this line, right now nothing is there. That's why things are going fine. But it's, uh, you know, it's populated with lots of matter. And on top of everything, we are adding the dummy also. Do you know dummy? Okay. Uh, ev everybody has tried at least once in their life layout. Have you tried once in your life? At least you've done. Yeah, yeah, workshop. You've done it once, right? So let's assume that you made one layout, and this is a full chip area. You made the layout. You did all the simulation packs and all these things. Now I am telling you that after one week we have to submit this for a tap out. Okay, so you reach there. Your packs and everything is working fine. So 
if every everything has been checked there might be possibility that these two are checked this is not completely checked in drc there are many errors are coming some of the errors you don't look at them those errors are density errors right poly density error metal 1 density error metal 2 density error metal 3 density error and if you are reading the uh, description it's written for 20 micrometer by 20 micrometer area at least 20% of metal 1 has to be there at least 20% poly has to be there and so on as many number of metals you have as many number of errors multiplied with the area will be there right you must have seen it yes or no but you say that even if it is there we should not worry because those are not important at the beginning right this is what you are doing but in reality you have to do this one you have to do this one so let's assume that this is this is a grid of 20 by 20 micrometer square so before you submit your design to foundry there is one more technique called dummy generation so by calculating in this 20 micrometer by micrometer if some uh, some value of metal one or poly is not available automatically that tool will generate here so many metal lines which are not going to connect anywhere it has been made such a way that it's not going to make the contact but it will be there the reason behind this is that because when all these things are being made in a, you know, using CNC machine you are adding many things right let's assume that you are making a so you are studying a VLSI technology course so do you know the steps of making uh, this transistor yes and so I am laughing <laughs> so well, you are taking one piece of thread and adding something each out something right those are the steps you have to follow some temperature right you have to keep some UV right and then you are creating such kind of structure but you wanted to make this one this is the ideal one this is not going to be created the reason is when you want to create this like this particular pole structure is being made by the unwanted each, uh, area each out by some UV process or something right so when you are doing this actually when you are giving some UV rays those rays have 7 degree of inclination and that's why like this side extra 7 degree will be east out and when this side this minus 7 degree will not be east out so this looks little bit printed one more thing when you are making this this diffusion and all these things when it is diffusion it's going through the the process of all this diffusion process so this is not becoming exactly square but it's <coughs> going like this going like this this particular thing if you zoom in in, in your if you are making your transistor you can see it's look like a bird pig so it's known as bird pig view so in reality you are going to see after diffusion bird pig view after following all these steps on top all these like metal and everything so let's assume that this is the top top side where it is like this it is like this it's not flat one so the last step of making any chip it's called CMP chemical metal polishing so while doing this and making it flat 
if in particular area which is 20 by 20 micrometer square it is given by cnc machine so depending on that through which it's being removed so in 20 micrometer by 20 micrometer if there is some uh, unwanted uh, sorry the less amount of metal one metal two are there then the rest of the part will be leached out completely because this chemical metal polishing is being done by maybe some chemicals I, I don't know I don't remember the names maybe hafium or HF you can check maybe but that is not so much important for me at least for our course in your VLSA technology course it is useful so when you are doing so it will each out even uh, the the metals which has been kept in less amount so we have to maintain the required amount of uh, metals and for that we have to follow something called DRC and we have to remove all the density errors also so to do that there is automatic dummy generation is there so entirely on this chip you will see just wires and wires you will not able to identify where my design is it's in the layout process right <laughs> so this is a crucial point without doing this you cannot send your uh, design to foundry or foundry will return back to you this is the final step and after DRC we are again running it back for one more time just to make sure that things are fine so it's a rigorous simulation just simulation simulation so you can meanwhile you can have pizza <laughs> right. this is how it goes in company uh, like most of the time simulators are doing your work right. you have to just do the tuning very intelligently if you are doing something uh, not intelligently, it will increase the tap out time and they don't want such engineers they want engineers who can do it very fast tap outs and that's why I'm asking you to do only systematic design when I'm saying systematic means do not deviate yourself from the from the normal process sometimes you are taking some random L sometimes you are taking not differential signal to make this uh, the system differential let's say at slow corner your output is not coming different so what you are doing you are just changing a little bit here and there slow corner you make it fixed but this will not work at layout level only do the design systematic right so when you are doing all such things there might be the case that you are not seeing the differential signal even though you made it differential unknowingly it become non-differential so you will see some harmonics right so they are not connected anywhere okay uh, sorry what you are saying no it's reverse if you are using less amount of some metal then to fix it for a given area you need to add some more wires or usage of that metal layer look when i am saying metal usage so polysilicon metal one metal two metal three and so on maybe metal eight when you are designing something maybe you are going till metal three four only so metal seven metal eight are missing you need to add add that and while making all these things some of the things are uh, automatically used from the transistors itself some part of diffusion part will be there polysilicon gates will be there so if the usage of some metal is less then you have to then you will have DRC error. but look uh, some places if you want to make just chain of inverters which is consuming the area of 20 by 20 micrometer square then uh, like in inverter how many metals you are going to use maybe metal 8 for VDD metal 7 for ground this is we are using because because of the low resistivity right this has low resistivity so we want to use that 
but other metals we can go till like polysilicon and then all metal one i am generally using for vd to ground connection and i am using metal 2 and metal 3 metal 4 metal 5 metal 6 and 7 i have not used at all so that's a problem you will get drc and you have to fix it that can be fixed at the end only because maybe you are fixing right now and afterwards you realize you you didn't need to do that so you have to design everything the whole chip and after that entirely on chip you have to run the trc and then you have to generate dummy it's called dummy generation right it's automatic generally it's available in in uh, inside the tool itself but there is no other way you cannot bypass this you can bypass only when let's assume that you are designing let's say some pll and you are giving to some other party like iit delhi right <laughs> then you will not learn it <laughs> because they are going to do it <laughs> right those who are having the final chip they are going to do it you have to just give the layout right then you don't have access to all these things but as we have to send your design completely on our own then we have to do all those things and you have to learn all these things there is no other way right so it's all long steps are there it's not one day job that's why we need some skilled person not just a person who can just work right? he has to understand like you are seeing 120 db gain at schematic level slow slow corner fast fast corner right just assume the case when you are going to make the layout and then you are looking for 120 db gain for all corners post layout simulation i mean to say right so that it's difficult and this lecture was not not planned and not uh, thought it will go this way we but my main agenda to teach you that you have to make layout such a way that you are not going to get harmonics because in that you are going to see the harmonics even if it's differential because uh, you cannot have equal distance wire or the equal length wire or you have to plan it from beginning for that generally if it is digital circuit even for analog i am using something called stick diagram right i, I taught you right in digital so one can use stick diagram If you want to learn i can tell you maybe offline some someday right you must be knowing right stick diagram no yes nazrul i am not asking question to any mtech student i taught them right all mtech students they they have been taught by me for digital so next time i am not taking digital by the way rahul and gopi are taking digital it's good for me i i'll have only one course <laughs> okay so now i'm asking you the question if you have so we are uh, closing deck there is no uh, i believe no issue in deck even i talked about some of the layout issue i'm asking you you have some analog signal you have to convert it to digital how can you convert it to digital any way which is known to you I'm telling any in common common circuit or common usage. Do not think about sample and hold and, and comparator. Okay, comparator. What comparator will do? So you are saying the common sense says that if I want to make just a one bit, one bit ADC, then it's a one and zero. But if I want to make multi bit, let's say two bits. Then three comparators. Why three? So what you are saying is also right. We can make it with three. Like 
in uh, when i was in uh, btech uh, first year and i went to one shopping mall so i have seen you know there was a big big guy was there and what you have to do this side there is a i believe inside this there has to be weight sensor and there is a big hammer you have to knock that hammer and here there are lots of leds are there Maybe those who are reaching here at head then like you are you will be given some 2500 but this was five floorer <laughs> men right so whatever i am giving as pressure as input i am supposed to convert it to this digital code right there's many uh, those many layers are there or labels are there labels from here to here so what do you think uh, these labels are in binary coded or some other other thing is there i'll call it shubham but i mean to say so when i i hit this weight sensor whatever the output is coming is it binary weighted or something else some part of uh, uh, reference okay so the, what is the name of the code is it binary you know many many uh, many uh, uh, number system like binary hexa right and other are also there so which uh, code will be there in this one and zero yeah siddhant are you following what i mean to say sandeep ha huh? binary why do you think it's binary okay thermometric look when the force is nil i am not giving in anything for zero <coughs> force all are zero look at all this red colored uh, leds are labels so let's make this one this one if i hit some some weight sometimes uh, like some somewhat uh, let's say one newton of force i am giving then one newton is let's assume that it's minimum then the first led will glow if it is two newton second will glow three newton third will glow but when these are getting in the glowing form the previous led is not getting one or zero right it will be same value so if your force is reaching here means all the leds will glow for maybe equivalent to all one binary code but what you are seeing right now it's thermometric code it's not binary right you can make it with other other theory also like just this one will glow or you have to make some other arrangement but right now what you are saying it's thermometric and this is the way you can convert it to some code so this is common sense as nazrul has told by comparator there might be something inside it which has some comparison or something but this is the way do you have any other technique any any other way other than this one comparison this is very very famous uh, example this has been asked in one of the exam for uh, like competitive exam and i checked it so let's assume that you have weight is available right now if i have 100 gram 200 400 800 1600 or 1.6 kg so if i have these many number of weights are available to me now i have some x weight of 
some block is available. I need to find out this x. How are you going to play with these weights and you will find out. Look at this, this has been kept intelligently so that it's a binary weighted weights. This very ancient technique I'm telling you. This was invented before what we have studied just now. This was invented later. This was invented. Of course, one side. You cannot keep two sides. Start from that discrete weight from the middle. Okay. So your algorithm says the middle. Okay. So where is the middle? Four hundred. Or eight hundred. Why four hundred? How do you get that? This is middle. Why do you think it's middle? In total, I have 32 kg, by the way. If you add this, not then 16, it was always 16, right? <laughs> right? So 32 kg, in total, I have available. So, <coughs> so 32 kg is available to me. If I take middle one, 16 kg, whether it is more than 16 kg, or less than 16 kg because everything is binary weighted and you are going to keep first weight as 16 kg and you will see whether it is going this side or this side if it is going down means its weight is more than 16 kg then you have to keep next weight which is 800 then you have to check whether it's up or down and so on right and you can find out with how many iteration by the way no look at this and uh, like in your common sense algorithm not i'm talking about not about uh, the big o notations i'm talking about 100 100 200 all these things are available so how many iterations after which you will know the value of x Six, not 5 to 10 exactly after 6 iteration because you don't have any other choice maybe at some point this will go down and you are reaching exactly at weight but still it's not known to you so you will not stop your algorithm right so you will go till end you will keep the last 100 gram also right so as many number of weights are available with you that much time this will take and still at the end maybe this side you may have combination of some 200 gram is available or as many number of uh, things are available you have to add them and that is the answer what is the minimum weight you can you can measure through this this technique for a given problem i'm talking about specific problem 100 gram and what is the maximum value which you can 32 kg again it's 32 right so it's all this was commonly known as binary search algorithm right so that is how it goes there are other algorithms through which you can find out digital code that's actually known as <coughs> pipeline maybe the pipeline algorithm surprisingly pipeline algorithm has invented even before these two just for your information <laughs> pipeline has like just to convert analog signal to digital Pipeline algorithm was the first algorithm which was uh, identified to convert analog to digital. So we'll talk about it maybe. And thereafter, there's something called Sigma Delta. This is not so much common, but <laughs> like you cannot understand it the way I thought in flash or binary algorithm based ADC, which is known as SAR, successive approximation register, and this is known as flash 
all the others through which you are finding out the value. This is in parallel. Everything is in parallel. And some pros and cons we are going to talk maybe tomorrow. You must have studied Flash algorithm somewhere. Right? You must be knowing about this. We'll talk about something higher than what you have studied. Do you want to ask something, some questions? Something? 